you wanted to talk about John Piper's article, and I have you, Jason, with me this week as not my not my host, but as my guest this week. So you're, <laughs> I get to ask you hard questions. <laughs> oh, man. Please don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> no, but I think it's a great idea. John Piper wrote the article that I've talked about in my videos some. Uh, and the title of it is Policies, Persons, and Paths to Ruin. And because John Piper is giving a kind of a negative viewpoint on both political candidates for president, major um, not, it, what was that? Major parties. Major yeah, bo candidates. both major, two major political parties. Yeah, and we can talk about third party too, but... But as far as the two major parties, he says some really, uh, I guess you could say harsh things for both sides that I think the way he put it is both, both paths are, are paths to destruction. <laughs> you know, both parties, the major parties are, are on a path to destruction. So because it's so negative, I think people that already have a vested interest in voting for one of those two major party candidates reacted pretty strongly. So there's a lot of responses to John Piper's article. And I've been talking about that in my videos. So what we're gonna do here is just kind of give a couple of things that each of us thought was good about John Piper's article. And then also maybe something we didn't think was as good or maybe didn't totally agree with. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I, I kind of just think it's good to go back and forth too. You know, I, I, we're not gonna like give uh, long presentations or anything, but just kind of have some discussion here so what was your initial reaction before we get into any positives you had, you know, just generally, how did you feel and why you think about that? My thought on it was, I kind of felt like even though John Piper was, he was saying some things that people didn't like to hear, obviously, some people yeah. and other people were happy. But one thing he did really good is he drew out some really good responses. Yes, he did. Right? Yes, he, did. he really yeah. drew out some arguments that needed to be put out there. And I'm not sure we would have ever heard those voices if John Piper didn't write his article. I like that. You know? And, and I want to piggyback off of that because as, as we've been talking throughout the week, emailing back and forth, the amount of people that have commented has gone up every time we've talked. Um, oh, mm -hmm. man, did you see this person has commented? Oh man, this person is coming. They did a video response, so on and so forth. So I agree with you. It has really stirred some, you know, he beat the bushes, so to speak, with that and really got some things riled up. My initial response, I realized was not the right response. And it took, because you and I, I knew you and I were going to be discussing this. Yeah. I knew that I needed to go back over and read it again. So one of the takeaways for me was that a lot of these articles and, and, and headlines, headlines alone, have just been so misleading in what the actual article is about that you really have to read it three and four times and underline and go back and do a little research just to get the most out of it. Because if you go by what the headline is and then you read it, you'll get a different perspective than if you just read it and just say the headline is, you know, cut the headline off. So for mm -hmm. me, one of the main things I got before we even get to the top things that we really picked up from it was the value of just rereading something mm -hmm. and with an open mind and an open Bible, but rereading it just to say, did I really understand what this person said? I'm not going to hold any biases because I think he might be saying something against the party that I would like, or he mm -hmm. might be supporting because, you know, John Piper's an evangelical. So most people are going to instantly assume that he's going to be on this evangelicals for Trump train mm. or evangelicals against Trump, however you want to, whatever it is, right. or evangelicals. So um, it was, to me, one of my main things was rereading it really has value. Go back mm -hmm. over and read it again. Don't just assume that you got it on your like first that. read. And goodness gracious, not from the snippet and please not from the headline. Read it yourself. Yeah. And that's what I, that was my first thing I got out of it. That's good because uh, I think we need that discipline, especially in the emotional, uh, you know, state that we're in right now, right before the election, our emotions are running high and it's easy to be very defensive. That's really natural. 
And like you said, you know, you, you just see an article and you're either like for it or against it, right? Let's go. <laughs> you're either on my side or you're not. But in reality, what Piper was saying was actually not extreme. And I'll just start here with one thing that I really liked was actually something kind of small. He said, not everybody is going to see it the way that I do. And I'm not saying everybody has to vote according to what I'm saying here. So even if everything that he said, he really means from the bottom of his heart, he does not expect other people to change how they're going to approach voting based on what he said. And that's helpful because that helps us just to listen. He, he doesn't have an agenda to say he's trying to get me to do exactly what he's doing. Right. I think all he's really was trying to do, one, is say, this is how I feel about it. This is how I look at it. And I want to be honest as a minister, as someone who's studied the word and is trying to guide people. Um, but I also want to help other people to really think about it, too. I really want to make sure that they really think through it biblically. And, you know, if they just need to be a little bit more mindful of some things, even if they still vote the same way, just be mindful, possibly, of some things that you were maybe overlooking. And so I think he's really, he's really saying some good things there without pushing a real strong agenda. So I thought that was good. I like it. All right, so I wrote all mine. So I'm gonna just so I, yeah. So this will be an eight-hour um, podcast. That's good, man. All right. <laughs> so I gleaned one of the things I gleaned was I gleaned that churches need to do a better job of discipling their members to be able to parse through issues, worldviews, and positions. Um, a well-taught member should be able to sit down, look at the issues, discuss the issues, the worldviews, and make a decision mm -hmm. based upon a biblical standard and. Um, that's something that I gleaned from it, because if you notice now, as you mentioned, this is a very, 2020 is, is going to go down in the books as just such a, a case study. So everybody's already on edge. Most of us already are, you know, 9.5. So it doesn't take much for people to go completely bananas. And then you add to this that, wait, what do you mean? I can't vote for my person because I'm a Christian or I, I should vote for this person because I'm a Christian? which is almost at the proverbial 11th hour to some people, they don't know how to parse through this. Like, I just know yeah. that person. I don't like that person. This person, they got that, that um, initial after the name. That's a party my, my family's always voted for. What do you mean? So I, I feel like John Piper was actually asking people or asking churches or, or kind of challenging them to do a better job in that regard of discipling them. But it really wasn't, it's not meant to happen this week or right. whenever he posted right. that article. So I like that. And, and I would add to that, that uh, this election is, is particularly, I would say particularly challenging in that regard. I think in years past, um, things might've been a little bit more straightforward, at least pre 2016, uh, you right. know, things tended to be in those boxes we were used to. But 2016 shifted the boxes. So you really have to have a good handle on your own biblical viewpoint <laughs> to be able to sort through all of these. And I'll be honest, one thing I, um, I, I feel like with Piper, he obviously thinks through things deeply. I try to, but it just shows you John Piper's thinking through it deeply. Al Mohler, uh, Dr. Michael Brown, Wayne Grudem. I mean... These guys are pretty smart, and they're not even looking at it the same way. So it shows you there's some complexity here. And, and to that point, if he had not written this article, would we be having these kind of conversations? Right. So yeah, that's kudos good. to John for writing it yes. and provoking this and giving us a chance to hear Wayne mm -hmm. Grudem and um, Al Mohler and all these other people give their opinions defend or, or attack John Piper right. didn't matter, but allow us a chance to hear their voices because we wouldn't have heard them. And like you said, they're pretty smart and they're still wrestling with these, uh, these topics. And I'll say a second good thing for me, John Piper said a lot of negative things about Trump. And I like the fact that he said some things that I think some Christians don't say enough mm -hmm. about Trump. 
And so John Piper really made sure to hit strongly on those weaknesses of Trump from a Christian standpoint, not attacking Trump from just, you know, a personal opinion standpoint. But also because John Piper was talking about it as someone who's not going to vote for Trump, at least that's what he thinks right now, that helps other people to listen to him a little better because I feel like when someone says, I'm going to vote for this person, but I know that they have some things that are not good, people stop listening because they're like, well, you're voting for him. Whereas when John Piper says, I'm not, it really helps people to hear evangelical Christians do take Trump's weaknesses seriously. Now, that doesn't mean we all come to the same conclusion about whether we should vote for him or not, but we do take those things seriously. So I thought that was good. I want to add, too, that a little bit of a criticism there, though, with, with Piper. I don't know that he acknowledges Trump has different modes. And maybe you would agree, or and no, have you noticed this? <clears throat> when Trump is at a rally, mm-hmm. he's one way. When Trump is on Twitter, he's one way. When Trump is in the Oval Office, right? He's, yeah. he, he acts according to the situation. So some of it is just showmanship. And I know Piper might still argue against that, but when Piper's behind the pulpit, he acts different, different. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So can't we afford someone like Trump the ability to act in different modes according to the situation? And I think some of, some of that comes across as negative or proud, but I, I think it's more that it's just his showmanship in some cases. I'm not totally defending it. I'm just saying it's something we should acknowledge. And, and I think we should also, and we kind of mentioned it earlier, this was not one of my points, but to just build off what you say, uh, let's be mindful Trump is a sinner. It's like everybody who's, who's electing, I mean, everybody who's voting, please forgive me, everybody who's pontificating, everybody, all of us, all of us are sinners. And so therefore, guess what he does? He sins. So therefore, why are we acting as if, because I didn't like the fact that he kind of made it sound as if all these things that Trump did, that he, he, he outlined, as if he, okay, all of us do these things to some degree, shape, or form. Some of us put us in blog posts. Some of us do it in videos. Some of us, sadly, are at campaign rallies or in the old office, but we all are sinners. Um, yes. A friend of mine said that we're, we're electing sinners. They're, they're sinners before they become, before they get into office, while they're in office, and when they leave from office, they'll still be sinners. And so, right. so his, his antics, his going ons, yeah, you're right. They, they are, they are sinners. They are sinful, but is it what, is he worse than any of us? Yeah. This is just on, on much greater display. On That's global true. Scale. But <laughs> if, I'm sure if any of us, if our antics for four years, however long he's been in public, or actually many years in public office were yeah. oh, man. public scrutiny, I mean, come on, John. If I so, was on camera as much as Trump, yeah, I, I, that would be tough. <laughs> they tell you that most, too. They say, like, hey, you know, Chris on this video, I mean, Paul, they said Paul, they said the same thing about Paul. Right. So yeah. he, he's bold in his writing. When he's in front of us, he's weak and frail. So to say that somebody is not always in this, you know, presented as one way, I don't think that's fair. But yeah, I, I didn't even, I wasn't even picking on that. Yeah. I like that one. Um, my next, I guess, takeaway that I enjoyed or liked was um, John Piper also pointed out that Christians need to also remember that we are citizens of two countries. I appreciate this view, and it's true. Often we do forget that we are citizens of God's land. Once we become believers, we are no longer citizens of the land that we were just in. So though we are in, I'm in my neighborhood or in my my town, I'm no longer a citizen of that. I'm, I'm now an alien. I'm now a sojourner. Now, though we live here, we do, do need to remember that we're only passing through. And this is hard to do. And I think that John Piper's article does cause me to at least think about it and stand, and this stood out to me. All right. That's good. 
So that idea of dual citizenship yes. and, and remembering, you know, that, that we, we definitely have a primary citizenship as Christians in the kingdom of God in heaven. And I agree. I think that one of the dangers of being in a, in a context like we are with America is we can, we, we can make too much out of politics, right? Uh, and they have a place and they're important, but as Christians, we, we have to keep those priorities in the right place. And it's so easy to lift politics up to the level of spiritual things. Yes. And uh, wow. Yeah. So that's good. I agree. And I love that Piper said, are we teaching, are we, are we cultivating the kind of Christians that are willing to die for their faith in Christ. And, you know, that's the danger with politics is it is a very self-centered endeavor. A lot of times I want the candidate that's going to help me. <laughs> right. And so we do need to make sure we, we, we maintain that mindset of, okay, it's all in God's hands. I just want to, the reason I try to vote the way that I do is because it's a right given to me by in this country. And I want to be a good steward of that privilege of voting. Um, but other than that, I have to leave the results in God's hands. Uh, you know, I, I, as a Christian, it isn't about getting my way, but I still think as a, as a husband, as a father, as a responsible citizen of this country, I want to vote in a way that I think is good for me and for my fellow citizens. Correct. Right. I like it. Okay. So we did our two, what we like. <laughs> Now we get to skewer him, right? <laughs> I got the grill ready. It's hot. Let's get these, <laughs> let's get these uh, John Piper shits kebabs ready to go. What was your, what was one of your not so much? For me, uh, actually, it's something I'm guilty of. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know that I would say he really did this, but I think what his article does is an example of what I can do which is overanalyzing something to the point of paralysis. <laughs> In other words, you look at something so many times, you've probably gone to a store where you had too many choices. Mm -hmm. It overwhelms you to the point where you don't even know what to choose. And I think someone like Piper looks at so many different factors uh, and, and all of the implications that it kind of leads him to say, well, I'm not going to choose either. But okay. I, I actually think what, what that does, even though he's right, and, he, and by the way, he does draw out the sin of pride, which, which is very serious. Mm -hmm. I, do, I do think he makes a good point there. We can tend to downplay that too much. But still, even if Trump is a proud person, I would say, like I said in my video today, you, you have to say from a conservative, if you're politically conservative, having the Supreme Court that we have now versus if Hillary had been voted in, I mean, that right there says that you could, you could set aside a lot of what John Piper is saying and just simplify it, yeah. not overanalyze it and say, look, what ultimately is better from a conservative standpoint? And if you are a conservative, Trump definitely gets things done that you, you, we would not have today if, if Hillary had been put in office. I like it. And, and, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give my I'm gonna give my one um, not so much to um, to kind of piggyback with that. Mm -hmm. One of my not so much is or my not so much from this article. I feel that John Piper oversimplified the contrast between the two parties. Yeah, um, there are some very serious issues with Donald Trump, no question about it. And I've even said he's a sinner, but so is Joe Biden. Okay, um, however. Many of the issues are with his choices. Sadly, the president has used some crass language, some horrible statements, and such like. That doesn't mean that I'm going to go do those things. Right. And that doesn't mean that somebody watching him is instantaneously going to do those things. And my argument is, well, John, if that's the case, then we should definitely go after Hollywood because they pump that garbage out on a regular basis into our living rooms through our televisions. They always put out things. If just seeing it or just someone doing it was 
going to guarantee that I was going to do it. So just because Tim wears a baseball cap, I'm going to wear a baseball cap. I, and it's Tim's fault that I'm wearing a baseball cap. No, that's not the case. Even though you might be in a position of power. Um, we, last week when we talked, you told me about your children. I, I'm almost 100% certain. If we go in there and look right now, your kids might not be wearing baseball caps. <laughs> just because, so just because you do it does not mean that someone else is going to do it. However, mm. the sins of, um, that he creates, I'm sorry, the sins of, of other parties that we're talking about are sinful policies as well as practices and laws. That's a whole different game. Mm. So just because Tim wears a baseball cap, that doesn't mean I'm going to wear a baseball cap. But Tim now as the mayor of our city imposing some ungodly, unjust laws, that's going to impact me no matter what, yeah. whether I voted for him or not. So I'm, I'm not, I, I thought that he oversimplified that as if, well, or, or try to make them exactly the same. You heard somebody say they're both mm-hmm. sins, but they're not equally damnable. They're both, um, they're both sins, but they're not equally as damnable. And our Lord says things like that to uh, Tyre and Sidon when he said, woe to you, um, Sodom and Gomorrah would still be around if they saw the things that you see. But so clearly there's a, there is a contrast between them. Um, yeah. They both were sinners, but there's just a, there's a, they're not all the same. And I felt like he tried to oversimplify that. So. Yeah. And, and he actually says something here. I'll read it. He says, I find it bewildering that Christians can be so sure that greater damage will be done by bad judges, bad laws, and bad policies than is being done by the culture-infecting spread of the gangrene of sinful self-exaltation and boasting and strife-stirring. So he's saying that Trump's character is more damaging than bad policies, I guess. Go ahead. You don't I agree. Have raise, no, I'm, I'm, I have to raise my hand and say, well, wait, <laughs> did, did all of this chaos start? Yeah. Yeah. Um, on January 20th, uh, 2017? No, it didn't. We weren't in good shape before. So therefore, we we can't lay it all at that man's feet. I mean, what about, I mean, just think about the logic. So that's why I felt like that one was just, I totally get what you want. And nor, we don't want a, 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 I would love for a, a dignified president that you know, whenever they get on Twitter or whenever they get in there, um, press conference, it's going to be a high level conversation, mm. very dignified and, and leave you feeling good. But like, man, I, that person represents us. I got you. Mm. Totally understand that. We don't have that. <laughs> but guess what? That doesn't mean that I have to get on the, I have to get on the Zoom call and, and act all crazy with Tim because, well, you know, Trump does it so I can go off on Tim. <laughs> what? I, I because, do. Yep. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I just think that, um, I agree. It would be awesome if Trump was someone that we just all felt really like, wow, what, what a great example of, of, you know, the epitome of the epitome of what we want to aspire to in this country. But I have to say he is a reflection of us, isn't he? You know, like we are a bombastic tumultuous, entertainment oriented culture. Sorry, I mean, that's what we are. And that's yeah, what we I mean, Well, keep in mind, is this is a representative government. <laughs> that's right. So we're really hiring, we're really, we're really voting for mirrors. That's all we really are. <laughs> At the local level, all the way up to the president, we're voting for mirrors yeah. that reflect us. So some people are gonna be mad because they're like, I don't want that, I don't, wait, I don't like the way it looks, but, and, yeah. okay, I, I, just, I just have to point this out also. Mm-hmm. is my contrast to John Piper, Romans 13, 4. And he's talking, and, and Paul is talking about submitting to authorities. Um, I'm sure we've all heard this Romans 13 in regards to churches opening up and wearing masks and all that kind of pandemic stuff. Yeah. I just want to jump to verse 4, and it says, for he is God's servant, and he's talking about the, the person in government, for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath 
on the wrong doer. So as we look at, so as we're looking at those laws, those policies and such that John, John Piper tried to shove away, that's what they're doing. The, the person that, whether he's a, whether it's Joe or whether it's Trump, they are going to be fulfilling laws and policies and such like that. I think it's far greater a concern than whether or not Joe Biden, you know, hated, you know, is, is just a, a, a fine, upstanding person. He can be mm -hmm. a fine, upstanding person and still institute horrible policies. Yeah. I mean, some of the policies that we've, we've heard already discussed are not very good. Yeah. So I, I think that that, but you can be a horrible, you can be a, a horrible person and still support good policies and laws. So well, I and I think it was Al Mohler in his, in his article that kind of pointed that out, that mm -hmm. your policies tie into character. Yep. Uh, in other words, if you're, if you're supporting bad policies, that says something about your character. Yep. And so no matter what we think of someone's presentation, even if they come across very respectable, mm -hmm. if their policies are evil in some way, then that says something about their character too. Uh, so much. I think I think that's how Al Mohler put it. I believe that's what he said, something to that extent. Yeah, the other thing I would say, though, you know, it, just because I do think it is important, um, Trump, in my opinion, I, I, I really did like the fact that we have someone like John Piper raising some legitimate concerns. I know Dr. Brown agreed with a lot of those concerns, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure... Uh, Wayne Grudem would agree with a lot of the concerns. I know you just expressed it, you know, that, yeah, Trump is not perfect or ideal in, in every way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But the key is, even if someone supports him, there is a difference between supporting them and idolizing them. And one good caution that comes out of Piper's article is be careful of idolizing your candidate whether that's Trump or Biden, because that's where I think we cross the line. That's where Piper's argument would really, really make sense. If, if we were saying, and I admit some people do make Trump look like he is the savior. Yep. Well, if that's how you're portraying him, then that is a problem. And I think Piper's article cautions against that mentality. But if you say, like you're saying, I do not idolize Trump. There's a lot I disagree with as a Christian, but I think his policies are more righteous from a biblical perspective. That's different. And that's more what I hear you saying. Correct. Well, great discussion on all of this. And I hope that we can uh, have more discussion too, that's you know, absolutely. you know, do more episodes like this. But uh, thank you for this discussion tonight. It was it was really good. Thank you so thank much. You so this much. was fun.